I'd just like to, I'm not going to reintroduce the speakers, but I'd just like to introduce the panelists. We have Peter Zornio, who is the Chief Strategic Officer for Emerson Process Management, and Louis Halverson, who is the Chief Technology Officer for Northwest Analytics, and Rob McGreevy, who is the Vice President of Information Operations and Asset Management. So with that, I'd just like to ask, are there any questions that people have or thought up during this session? Okay, wait, wait, wait. We got to get a mic because. Oh, yeah. Brooke, uh, what is your support Quit. process for what's installed within your company? Because it sounds like broader company. Repeat the question because it's on tape and they, they oh, need to hear tape. it. Sorry. What is the. Uh, <coughs> it works. Uh, what is the uh, process that your company is using to support uh, your, uh, your EMI implementation? Uh, what type of group does it take or individuals or, or resources? Actually, we have a corporate um, IT group, and, and part of that has been carved out specifically for MES. Specifically for MES initiatives, and so it's a combination of that group working with um, the, I guess, the, the control specialist group from the engineering, which I kind of represent our control specialists, but also our business processes from the manufacturing side, from the, the plant side, working with the IT side, and then we partner together and work with vendors to help identify the appropriate solution. And so it's kind of like a three-prong approach, but internally it's mostly led by our MES IT group with strong support from someone like me to really help drive what are our needs how we want to use this to make sure we get the right thing in place, but also to help gut check them against, uh, you know, our vendor selection process and making sure that we're using the correct vendors based on the installed base that we have, who really makes the most sense. Because sometimes our corporate group, they might have a core knowledge here or there or a preference, but that isn't always a good fit at the site based on some of our installed bases and how all of the different interfaces work and play together. Anybody else want to address that? Or do anybody have any other questions? There's another Frank, question. Frank, this is for you. Um, you said that the uh, that you have data that is stored both in SAP and in the MES layer. Uh, if uh, I've always been, uh, I've always worked from the assumption if I have the data twice. I have to audit that data. How do you create the audit process to uh, validate the data process between the two? So um, th there is uh, no replication. So the data that are in SAP uh, are not replicated into the MES. So we have two uh, set of different data. And uh, there is, uh, for the factory which is running uh, under FDA, for instance, uh, we have this kind of, uh, of situation within Nestle. Uh, everything is audited at the MES level. Uh, everything is audited separately at the MES level or at the uh, SAP level. But there is no mix between the two. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Well, if not, what I would like to do is just ask the suppliers that are here if they could address maybe some of the things that they're seeing, the future things that they're seeing for EMI or what's the direction, the trends that they're seeing. We could start with Peter. That's always a good feature. Um, okay, so I just a couple points. One thing I guess I'd say is uh, I didn't hear anybody talk about something that I thought or maybe I'd hear talked about a little more, which is kind of using KPIs and using some of this data to get goal alignment. Because frequently what happens is you may have different organizations within a facility maintenance, production, whatever, that are working to their own individual goals, but when you at least make it public where things are overall in a facility and what the key top KPIs are, then everybody has an understanding of, of, of what they align their goals and they pull together on, on going up the common direction. So the, the reliability guys aren't looking to slow things down so that they can extend a turnaround when they know that, you know, boy, we really need to hit this production target because it's a key thing that we need to do. So that was... I think that was one area I didn't think about. Another point is, you know, when we talk about a lot of this stuff, the visualization is, of course, very important, but it, it's, you know, it is just the dashboard, and all the hard work is always, 
you know, working through actually getting the data in real time, getting the data in a digital format for that might have been on a piece of paper or an operator workaround, like Brooke talked about. Uh, a lot of times there's extra instrumentation involved. We can help with that part too. And, uh, you know, and a lot of things that just to get the foundation before you can actually get to some of these reports. Okay. And I, I want to support what, what Peter's saying also about the KPIs, and I briefly touched on it, but that actually is something very, very important that we're hearing from our plant managers, our directors of engineering, or excuse me, our directors of um, operations, and our vice presidents that they want to see them, but they also want our lower levels of the organization to see them too, just for what Peter's saying, the alignment. That's a very important piece of um, the visualization and, and bringing it all together. So I guess I'd add two quick points. Uh, one, and, and Frank uh, touched on it a little bit, but uh, mobility. So once you get this infrastructure in place and you get some of the basic client tools for reporting and, and analytics in place, <clears throat> there's a tremendous amount of push in the industry to, to see that stuff on any device, whether it's an Android thing, a Microsoft thing, an iOS thing. And so that, that's been one thing that we've seen quite a bit is uh, how do we extend this information out to mobile workers, where, wherever they are. I think the second thing that we've seen as an industry trend is once you get these dashboards and KPIs up, you're looking at things like process center lining or you're looking at the example where you don't want to exceed certain targets for energy consumption, it's alert and notification to these workers and then remediation or procedural enforcement. What do you do once you're approaching this condition or, or um, you've exceeded a certain threshold or a certain KPI? And so things like procedural enforcement, workflow, things like that actually start to come into play. So that's probably the second thing that we've seen as a trend in the industry that we're, uh, we've been addressing. I've got a couple of things, one of which is uh, transition in the discussions from what a great idea EMI is to how do you actually make it work. And so dashboards, charts, data collection, all, uh, analytics aren't new, and you've always been able to do things like this, but things like our, our, our customers are now bringing us the procedures that work for them. Part of that's identifying the right data, making sure everybody's getting things they can do something about. Don't put an alarm in front of somebody who can't act on it that type of thing. So part of it is these conversations have been very good on now that's a great idea, how do you get there? Now what we see pushing toward the future is what do you do with all this accumulated knowledge? And lots of people brought that up. They've got an aging workforce. Um, they're now making better decisions more quickly, but they're still making the same decisions over and over again. And that's how do you accumulate the knowledge and have access to it to help solve problems. That's a first step. And you know that's something we're, we're working on where you can put keywords in and it'll tell you who else in your organization had the same problem or a similar one, and you can drill down and look at things. But the next one, people say, it's okay, now I've seen a signal, why doesn't it tell me what I already should know? And I think when you get everything all woven together, that's a pretty good point, is I've got an operator, I've got a signal, I could spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the answer is, or probably the information's out there, the technology's there, why doesn't it immediately give me some guidance into how I go solve the problem? And I think that's when you start finally getting all the value out of everything you put together. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any other comments or anything that they'd like to say? Last remarks? Okay. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, there is this part two, and hopefully this was, uh, I thought this was a very dynamic session. I think that we have some great speakers in the afternoon as well. So please come back, and thank you. And thanks to our speakers.